You've experienced the peak of platforming. Oh, fuck, I'm out. Now, take it to the next level with the Wario Land Fart Squawks Hotbox Hotel Nostalgia Fever Season Pass Deluxe Expansion Pack. Extend your expired license for another week of fun with new features like a sound test. Oh, no! Excuse me! And HD rumble that lets you feel every beef. <laughs> this expansion will only be available for the next 15 minutes. So call now and we'll include an extra set of Wario gas canisters. A $30 value for only $59.99. Howdy ya, idiot! 3D All-Stars got decent reviews, but nearly all of them expressed a disappointment that Nintendo didn't do more. There were rumors that Mario 64 would be getting a remake, a treatment befitting one of their landmark games, and rendered even more plausible by the numerous Zelda overhauls. Failing that, they at least could have enhanced the original games to the same extent that fans have. Most reviewers compared the game against the original hardware, but that's not the bar Nintendo had to clear with this game. Maybe they were afraid of damaging their relationship with Nintendo, but I don't have one nor credibility, nor integrity, nor shame. So I can do the dirty work of comparing the collection directly against what you can get from emulators and ports. The purpose of this isn't to make the game look bad or drive anyone away from buying it. I'll stress right now that these are the best official releases of the games and it's a fine way to play them. But it is important to take stock of how well Nintendo is competing against their fans, which they're doing whether they like it or not. Usually, people defend unofficial emulators by saying they don't pose a threat to game companies. I'm going to dive headlong in the other direction and say that maybe they're supposed to. The most interesting discovery I made while researching emulation law for a video came from the judge's statement in the Connectix case, which was the most important in terms of setting the precedent that emulators are legal. It states that emulation is transformative and falls under fair use, which is commonly argued online. But what no one ever talks about is how the ruling goes beyond just allowing emulation to exist and endorses its competition against official products. Nintendo has never accepted this idea and forcefully equates emulators with piracy while using absolute statements like, it is not open for debate. Well, I'm sorry, but all of it is. You can't wave a magic wand and make the thing you don't like go away. It would be like Microsoft saying that Sony is unfairly harming them by making consoles and that everyone should pretend PlayStations don't exist. If Microsoft wants your sale, they have to earn it by making the better product. And the Connectix ruling seems to clearly invite emulators to compete on the same terms. So in that spirit, here's how 3D All-Stars fares. Mario 64 seems to be emulating the Shindo ROM from 1997, which added rumble and patched out a lot of speedrunning tricks. Just like the original, it runs at 30 frames per second in a 4-3 ratio. The resolution has only been bumped to 720p, which is baffling when the more advanced games in the collection are emulated at 1080p. The image also doesn't fill the screen and leaves black bars in both handheld and docked mode. The camera hasn't been improved and the y-axis has been inverted with no option to reverse it, which can be disorienting since none of the other controls were inverted. The only real enhancement is that the textures are sharper, which some people erroneously interpreted as a sign that Nintendo was including uncompressed assets from the original development. Maybe in one or two cases, but on a closer look, the waxiness and wavering lines make it clear that the majority of these were AI upscaled. They look better than Waifu 2X, but not as good as hand-drawn replacements, which they at least could have done for the HUD. They also didn't correct a lot of easy-to-fix issues, like the hard lines where the shadow is clipping or the ridiculous low LOD Mario model. So that's what you get with Mario 64. Plain emulation with batch-scaled textures. Happy Anniversary! A prolific modern named Kaze had Mario 64 running at 60 frames per second over two years ago. He also made progress with an analog camera and plenty of other enhancements. Widescreen has always been simple to achieve via basic emulator settings, but there are native widescreen patches that go a step further and properly place the HUD. On top of that, there's no problem rendering at 1080p and there are plenty of texture packs to choose from. This may not be to your taste, but it's a demonstration of how far you can go via modding a ROM. This is not some Unreal Engine recreation. It's running in an N64 emulator using new models and baked-in lighting. The fact that Nintendo chose to emulate every game in this collection didn't preclude them from making major enhancements. It has to be stressed that N64 emulation on PC is far behind every other Nintendo platform for a number of reasons, and yet it would still be hard to argue that All-Stars outdoes what you can get on Project 64 or Moopin. Then the PC port came along. This is legal when extracting assets from a ROM you already possess to compile the game using reverse-engineered source code. This version also has true widescreen and can run at 60 frames per second with improved draw distances. On top of that, it has support for analog camera movement, rumble, in-game button mapping, the option to stay in levels after getting stars, the Mario Odyssey mechanics, online co-op, a fun cheat menu, and whatever the fuck this is. 
Awesome. There are already plenty of texture and model edits to choose from, and again, even if none of these are to your taste, new mods are popping up every day. This is what a real celebration of Mario 64 looks like, and most of the work went into reverse engineering the source code from the ROM, which Nintendo would never need to do. It was ported to Switch within weeks of the PC release, meaning that there had been a 60 frames per second widescreen port of Mario 64 on Switch months before All-Stars released, and by all accounts it's the more polished product. It even fills the screen up in handheld mode. The other titles fare just slightly better. Mario Sunshine was reportedly running at 60 frames per second on the GameCube before being capped to 30 just before release. Dolphin had it running at 60 frames again over five years ago. It can even run that smoothly on modded Wii hardware. On top of that, there's a comprehensive mod out called Sunburn that makes the game more open and adds new stages and quality of life improvements. Once again, compare this to the All-Stars pack where Nintendo is mainly just delivering widescreen with batch upscaled assets. There's no analog spray option, even though Nintendo has a GameCube adapter that would have been perfect for supporting the original controls. I don't even have to tell you that, of course, that very adapter can be used on PC to play with the GameCube controls. Nintendo understandably didn't have many choices here, but in my opinion, swapping between two separate triggers feels cumbersome. At the very least, the upscaled cutscenes do look a lot better. Mario Galaxy was always a 60 frames per second game with widescreen, and it still looks pretty great, so there's not as much to remaster as the others. The game is a hybrid of emulation with code recompiled to run natively on Switch. And while I give them credit for not just dumping the Chinese Shield version on here, there's not much to get excited about other than 1080p, which in this case is fine. What isn't is that there's an all-pervasive issue with banding on gradients and alpha textures. These glow effects are used so often that you can't really go 30 seconds without seeing one, so it's a fairly annoying problem. There's also a very noticeable lack of anisotropic filtering on big landscapes, but it's not as bad on the planetoids. The worst issue is how the pointer controls have been translated over. All-Stars locks it to the gyro in docked mode, which feels very natural with split Joy-Cons but moderately stiff with the Pro Controller. In handheld mode, the touchscreen has to be used, which is inflexible and awkward. The Wii Remote excelled at aiming quickly all over the screen, and trying to recreate that with a finger while also keeping your hand on the controls is unworkable. The Shield version allowed the analog stick to move the pointer, which should have been kept as an option in this mode along with the gyro. Oh, you died. Well, why wouldn't you tell me that? The absence of Galaxy 2 may be the breaking point for the collection, as its addition would have gone a long way to justifying the price tag. Some have speculated that the heavier reliance on IR aiming for Yoshi wouldn't have translated well to Gyro, but it works well enough in Dolphin that it almost certainly wasn't the issue, they just didn't take the time to include it. So barring any sudden updates, it's a plain collection of minimally enhanced old games for $60. And as if Nintendo foresaw that people might be on the fence about buying it, they forced a cutoff date for the availability as a way of jolting you out of indecision. Maybe you weren't sure it was worth it, but now you have to get it before it disappears! It's the same tactic trashy infomercials have used for decades, and it seems to have worked. The game is already one of 2020's best sellers. It was also quickly exploited by scalpers, who always seem to find plenty of opportunity with Nintendo's products. In an alternate universe, maybe Nintendo could have sold the game without trickery by just giving it more compelling content. There's no reason Nintendo couldn't absolutely eclipse its fans in a direct competition to make the better product. It would be an insult to say otherwise. They have some of the most talented developers in the entire world. Does anyone believe that Nintendo was incapable of getting Mario 64 to run with 60 frames per second and widescreen on Switch, just like fans did? It's not too dissimilar to what's been going on with their emulators for years. This horse has been beaten into a cloud of vapor, but the most advanced feature Nintendo added with the Switch Online emulator was arguably Rewinding, which was available on ZSNES 20 years ago. I dug it up and could barely even get the EXE to launch it's so old, and yet it's still disappointingly competitive with Switch Online. It's as if it took two decades for Nintendo to catch up to that old feature set, while PC emulators have since gotten light years ahead with things like HD Mode 7 and widescreen. Maybe it's too much to ask them to top BSNES, but does anyone believe Nintendo isn't capable of soundly trouncing an emulator from the fucking, fucking Clinton, Clinton presidency? presidency. Hey, Big Max. The silver lining of 3D All-Stars is that maybe it's hinting that N64 and GameCube emulation is finally coming to Switch Online. But if this is the level of quality we can expect, it'll be yet another lackluster service well behind PC emulators. These are the results of Nintendo's burying its head in the sand as a matter of policy. By largely ignoring the competition from emulators, they've made uncompetitive products. And it's not just something for whiners like me to whine about. It's starting to become their problem. 
Nostalgia and Mario allow them to get away with it this time, but at a certain point, people have to get too underwhelmed to keep buying. Right? Right? This all might sound very negative, but I say this as someone who loves the company and wants them to do well. I want to see a Nintendo that competes with fans as fiercely as they used to compete with Sega. I want them to look at BSNES or MGBA as the targets to shoot for for their own services. They don't have to win the fight, they just have to put up a fight. They've demonstrated many times now that they'd rather push underwhelming products with underhanded tactics, and to add insult to injury, as I was playing this collection with Joy-Cons that are absolutely fucked, Nintendo is apparently mounting a legal defense that the issue doesn't exist, and isn't an inconvenience for anyone. It's getting harder to remember, but they used to have a reputation for delivering absolutely rock-solid products on both their hardware and software side. Watching their quality decline like this only makes playing your old games in an emulator that much more compelling a choice, which the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals seems okay with. For people who don't know anything about emulators, 3D All-Stars is fine. It is the best version of each game Nintendo has ever offered. I'm just saying we should probably ask them to do a little bit better than us. And now I present to you my ad from a few weeks ago, remastered in a slightly higher resolution, only for patrons pledging $60 and up. Everyone else, stop the video now. Something's coming! It's Wario as you've never seen him before! In Wario Land...